Edifomation, ketogenic diets, KD, have emerged. Given the drastic change in nutrient composition during KD, it is reasonable to hypothesize large-scale changes in the human metabolome. Furthermore, this alteration in the metabolome could also lead to changes in immunity. A recent clinical nutrition study discusses alterations in the human metabolic fingerprint associated with KD. Study, a ketogenic diet substantially reshapes the human metabolome. Image credit, nadiamp shutterstockcom study, a ketogenic diet substantially reshapes the human metabolome. Image credit, nadiamp shutterstockcom Background WD entails the excessive intake of ultra-processed food with high quantities of sugar and refined carbohydrates. This diet has been linked to the development of various diseases, such as diabetes and obesity. Previous research has shown that the excessive consumption of carbohydrates triggers aberrant activation of the NLRP3 inflammasome. This leads to a higher secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines and, as a result, contributes to most modern noncommunicable diseases. Comparatively, KD involves a minimal intake of carbohydrates and leads to the hepatic synthesis of ketone bodies, thereby providing a robust alternate source of energy to the body's peripheral tissues. One type of ketone body known as beta-hydroxybutyrate, BHB, serves as a substrate for mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation, OXFOS, and leads to pleiotropic effects. Recent research has shown that KD significantly bolsters human CD4 and CD8 T-cell immune capacity and the differentiation of regulatory and memory T-cells. These observations could indicate that the effects of KD on T-cell immunity may evoke marked changes to the human serum metabolite composition. About the study 40 healthy adult volunteers were recruited to participate in a three-week ad libitum KD for a prospective nutritional intervention study. At the start, T0, and end of the study, T1, urine analyses and untargeted mass spectrometric metabolome analyses of the tryptophan pathway were performed. Serum metabolites were also quantified. We recommend. Targeted prebiotics alter the obese gut microbiome in humans. Jinjun, Shi et al., Signal Transduction and Targeted Therapy, 2021. Dietary Regulation in Health and Disease. Chiwu et al., Signal Transduction and Targeted Therapy, 2022. Goldenberry, Physilis Peruviana, Alleviates Hepatic Oxidative Stress and Metabolic Syndrome in Obese Rats. Sharif A. Abdelmadaleb Musa, et al., J.A.P.P.L. Farm. Science, 2022. Identification of host-specific skin mucus and gut microbiota in snakehead merle, Chana striata, Block, 1793, using metagenomics approach. Kieran D. Razel, et al., J.A.P.P.L. Biology Biotechnol, 2023. Powered by. Prior to the start of the study, Participants consumed a standard WD comprising about 55 to 60 percent carbohydrates, 25 to 30 percent fat, and 10 to 15 percent protein. In the KD, a maximum of 10 percent of the daily caloric intake was provided by carbohydrates, whereas the remaining diet consisted of 60 to 70 percent fat, 20 to 30 percent protein, and 10 percent carbohydrates. All participants completed the study and reported sufficient levels of ketone bodies throughout the dietary intervention course. Key Findings Even a short-term KD of three weeks fundamentally reshaped the human metabolome. In fact, the metabolic steady state adjusted rapidly towards the production and utilization of ketone bodies. This analysis also showed improved insulin and triglyceride levels and higher quantities of metabolites, controlling mitochondrial protection and anti-inflammation. The marked reduction of carbohydrates led to a reduction in both insulin and C-peptide levels, which may explain the moderate weight loss observed in the participants. It could not be confirmed whether the extent of weight loss correlated with the changes in serum metabolic parameters. 
The fasting serum glucose concentration remained stable, whereas increased urea levels could be due to enhanced protein metabolism. Concentrations of alanine, glucogenic amino acid, AA, proline, and glutamine were markedly reduced, while leucine, isoleucine, and branch chain AA, BCAA, valine showed higher abundances. Higher fat consumption improved the serum lipid profiles of the participants. Importantly, a profound upregulation of both acylcarnitines and free fatty acids was observed. During KD, high acylcarnitines imply a higher demand for long-chain fatty acids as substrates of beta-oxidation. Using carnitine as a transport shuttle system, these substances must be transported into the mitochondrial matrix. Linoleic acid, omega-6, linolenic acid, omega-3, docosahexaonic acid, DHA, and icosatetraenoic acid, ETA, levels were significantly elevated. This observed shift could contribute to the dampening of innate inflammation. KD significantly shifted the metabolism of tryptophan towards kinurenic acid and kynurenine while attenuating the synthesis of quinolinic acid. Kinurenic acid has been shown to exert protective effects on mitochondrial respiration, while quinolinic acid is associated with mitochondrial dysfunction. Therefore, greater oxfos is supported by improved mitochondrial protection. Conclusions The current study demonstrated that even after a short period of KD, significant changes in metabolite composition could occur. These changes could have a beneficial impact on both immune cell fate and metabolic programming beyond ketone effects. No metabolic risk factors were identified. Based on the findings, it could be concluded that KD is a useful therapeutic and preventive immunometabolic tool, at least in the short and medium term. However, more research is needed to determine whether KD produces similar beneficial effects in the longer term and whether short-term KD could provide lasting metabolic benefits. Study reveals how immune system protects the body against pathogens. Download PDF copy. Reviewed by Emily Henderson, Bachelors of Science May 8, 2023. First study of humans with a rare immunodeficiency reveals how the immune system protects the body against pathogens known to cause serious diseases, such as tuberculosis and COVID-19. The research involving McGill University paves the way for new therapies to treat autoimmune diseases, chronic inflammatory diseases, and new approaches to vaccine development. The immune system responds differently to various types of pathogens, like bacteria, parasites, and viruses. However, scientists are still trying to uncover how this complex network functions together and the processes that can go wrong with immunodeficiencies. The immune system plays a vital role in protecting the body from harmful germs that make people ill. It's made up of a complex network of organs, cells, and proteins like IRF1 or regulatory factor 1, which is key in the regulation of an early immune response to pathogens, says co-author of the study David Langley, an assistant professor in the Departments of Human Genetics and Microbiology and Immunology at McGill University. A better understanding of these specific processes will help us pinpoint the cause of defective immune responses and perhaps even allow to boost an appropriate immune response to better combat illness, adds Langley who is also a principal investigator at the Victor Philip Dottola Institute of Genomic Medicine. Understanding the Role of IRF1 in Immune Responses Previous studies on mice that were IRF1 deficient have shown that the animals were highly susceptible to many viruses. In studying the first human patients with IRF1 deficiency ever identified, the researchers found that while the patients were highly susceptible to some bacterial infections, surprisingly they can defend themselves normally against viruses, including COVID-19. This study provides new insight into the mechanisms underlying the human immune responses to mycobacteria, which includes pathogens known to cause tuberculosis, versus differences in the immune response to viruses. Unlike in mice, we show that in humans, the activity of IRF1 is not essential to antiviral immunity. 
Jorg Fritz, co-author, associate professor in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology. Based on our findings, it could be possible to think of therapeutic avenues to block or activate the action of IRF1 and control the type and intensity of immune responses. Our findings shed light on our understanding of the specificity and selectivity of our immune responses towards different pathogens, says co-author Philippe Gros, a professor in the Department of Biochemistry and principal investigator at the Victor Philip Dottelet Institute of Genomic Medicine at McGill. Source Antibiotics, Western diet and higher socioeconomic status may increase IBD risk in children. Download PDF copy Reviewed by Emily Henderson, Bachelors of Science May 8, 2023 Children and adolescents face greater risk of inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, when exposed to antibiotics or a Western diet at early ages or when their family has higher socioeconomic status, according to a study being presented today at Digestive Disease Week, DDW, 2023. Pediatric IBD cases are rising globally, and approximately one in four of all IBD cases are now diagnosed before age 21, said Nisha Thacker, the study's lead author and a gastrointestinal dietitian. A unique concern about pediatric IBD is the impact that the inflammation has on a child's growth and the progression of puberty, so parents should be aware of this condition and the modifiable factors that influence it. As a part of her PhD studies, at the University of Newcastle in Australia, she conducted a meta-analysis of 36 observational studies representing approximately 6.4 million children. Thacker found that any exposure to antibiotics before age 5 was linked to a three times greater risk of pediatric IBD, and exposure to four or more courses of antibiotics to a 3.5 times greater risk. Lower socioeconomic status appears to be a protective factor that is associated with a 65% lower risk of childhood IBD. Greater consumption of vegetables was also protective, as was having two or more siblings and being exposed to pets during childhood. The findings that exposure to animals and having only one toilet are protective of IBD indicate that excessive hygiene can reduce microbes in the environment and interfere with development of a robust microbiome, Thacker said. Basic hygiene is recommended but allowing children to play outdoors and interact with pets in a safe environment appears to be beneficial for developing a strong immune system. Many of these factors can impact our gut microbiota and may have a particularly strong effect in a child. A Western diet, high in sugars and ultra-processed foods and low in vegetables, is a prime example. Nisha Thacker, Studies Lead Author and Gastrointestinal Dietitian We Recommend Field test and probabilistic analysis of irregular steel debris casualty risks from a person-born improvised explosive device. Pyotr W. Cialicki et al., Defense Technology, 2021. Codenopsis, Tangshan Olive. Amelioration effect on diabetic kidney disease rats induced by high-fat diet feeding combined with streptozotocin. Xianyuan Lu et al., Natural Products and Bioprospecting, 2018. A combined finite element and deep learning network for structural dynamic response estimation on concrete gravity dam subjected to blast loads. Xian Fong et al., Defense Technology, 2022. Unique circulating microRNA profiles in epidemic Kaposi sarcoma. Harana Muwanj et al., Non-coding RNA Research, 2022. Powered by Another risk factor is early exposure to secondhand smoke, which doubled the risk of IBD in children. Thacker advised families with young children to emphasize a diet rich in vegetables and minimally processed whole foods, use antibiotics cautiously in early childhood, consider adopting a pet, prevent secondhand smoke exposure, and avoid excessive worry about hygiene, especially in high income countries. If a family has a history of IBD or a child has a history of eczema-slash-rhinitis, encouraging breastfeeding, followed by a healthy diet pattern for the child, may minimize compounding effects of a Western diet on the genetic risk.
A novel risk factor identified in the study is being a non-Caucasian child living in a high-income country, which tripled pediatric IBD risk. The influence of migration on pediatric IBD is the next focus of Ms. Thacker's research. Source Digestive Disease Week Be the first to rate this article. Posted in Child Health News, Medical Research News Tags, Adolescence, Breastfeeding, Children, Diet, Eczema, Genetic, Hygiene, Immune System, Inflammation, Inflammatory Bowel Disease, Microbiome, Puberty, Research, Rhinitis, Vegetables New Zebrafish Model provides insight into how the brain acquires essential omega-3 fatty acids. Download PDF Copy Reviewed by Emily Henderson, Bachelors of Science May 8, 2023 Researchers at the UCLA David Geffen School of Medicine, the Howard Hughes Medical Institute at UCLA and the National Institutes of Health have developed a zebrafish model that provides new insight into how the brain acquires essential omega-3 fatty acids, including docosahexaonic acid, DHA, and linolenic acid, ALA. Their findings, published in Nature Communications, have the potential to improve understanding of lipid transport across the blood-brain barrier and of disruptions in this process that can lead to birth defects or neurological conditions. The model may also enable researchers to design drug molecules that are capable of directly reaching the brain. Omega-3 fatty acids are considered essential because the body cannot make them and must obtain them through foods such as fish, nuts, and seeds. DHA levels are especially high in the brain and important for a healthy nervous system. Infants obtain DHA from breast milk or formula, and deficiencies of this fatty acid have been linked to problems with learning and memory. To get to the brain, omega-3 fatty acids must pass through the blood-brain barrier via the lipid transporter MFSD2A, which is essential for normal brain development. Despite its importance, scientists did not know precisely how MFSD2A transports DHA and other omega-3 fatty acids. In the study, the research team provides images of the structure of zebrafish MFSD2A, which is similar to its human counterpart. The snapshots are the first to detail precisely how fatty acids move across the cell membrane. The study team also identified three compartments in MFSD2A that suggest distinct steps required to move and flip fatty acids through the transporter, as opposed to movement through a linear tunnel or along the surface of the protein complex. The findings provide key information on how MFSD2A transports omega-3 fatty acids into the brain and may enable researchers to optimize drug delivery via this route. The study also provides foundational knowledge on how other members of this transporter family, called the Major Facilitator Superfamily, MFS, regulate important cellular functions. The study was led by Tamir Gonan, Ph.D., of UCLA, and Doreen Mathies, Ph.D., of NIH Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institute of Child Health and Human Development, NICHED. Additional funding for the study was provided by NIH's National Institute of General Medical Sciences, NIGMS, and the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Source University of California, Los Angeles Health Sciences Journal Reference Nguyen, C., et al., 2023 Lipid Flipping in the Omega-3 Fatty Acid Transporter Nature Communications doi.org slash 10.1038 slash s41467-023-37 702-7. Be the first to rate this article. Posted in Cell Biology, Biochemistry. Tags, Birth Defects, Blood, Brain, Cell, Cell Membrane, Child Health, Docosahexaonic Acid, Drug Delivery, Fatty acids, fish, medicine, membrane, nervous system, pH, protein, research. Comments, zero. Researchers establish a benchmark for gallbladder cancer surgery. Download PDF copy. Reviewed by Emily Henderson, 
Bachelors of Science May 8, 2023. The quality of surgery can drastically influence both short- and long-term postoperative outcomes and is a crucial consideration in studies that assess surgical outcomes. One approach for developing accurate quality measures is benchmarking, a quality improvement process in which the best possible outcomes are identified to serve as a point of reference against which performance can be compared. Surgery for gallbladder cancer, GBC, is a technically challenging surgical procedure and requires considerable expertise to meet high-quality operative standards. While a recent study showed that the quality of GBC surgery in the U.S. differs by insurance status, income, geographic location, education level, and other characteristics, low-quality surgery remains common, indicating the need for specific benchmarks. For the first time, researchers from Boston University Chobanian and Avedesian School of Medicine and the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center have established a benchmark for GBC surgery that may be useful in identifying the best treatment hospital for patients with gallbladder cancer and improve the overall quality of care. Defining benchmark values for GBC surgery will create a reference that institutions can use to assess their surgical performance improve surgical outcomes, and help move centers that currently perform lower-quality GBC surgery toward performing higher-quality surgery. Eduardo Vega, MD, Corresponding Author, Assistant Professor of Surgery, Boston University Chobanian and Avedesian School of Medicine. The researchers examined more than 900 patients with GBC who had surgery between 2000 and 2021. These patients were treated at 13 different hospitals across seven countries and four continents. The researchers then selected a group of 245 patients who are low-risk patients and had standardized GBC surgery at hospitals with established centers of excellence, specialized programs with exceptionally high concentrations of expertise and related resources. This group was used as a standard for comparison. The benchmark group was then used to define the best practices related surgical outcomes, benchmark values, as the length of surgery, rate of morbidity, severe morbidity, blood loss, transfusion, positive margin, and number of lymph node retrieved. Then the benchmark group was compared to those of the non-benchmark group, revealing that the benchmark group had a significantly better overall survival rate. We recommend Advanced emphysema preoperative chest radiographic findings as predictors of outcome following lung volume reduction surgery. Daniel D. Maki et al., Radiology, 1999. Childhood Moyamoya Disease, Quantitative Evaluation of Perfusion Mr. Imaging, Correlation with Clinical Outcome After Revascularization Surgery. Tejin Yun et al., Radiology, 2009. Robotic Surgery for Rectal Cancer. Operative Technique and Review of the Literature. Hidate Hoshi Katsuno et al., Journal of the Anus, Rectum and Cologne, JARC, 2020. Transoral Robotic Surgery in Head and Neck Cancer, What Radiologists Need to Know About the Cutting Edge. Lori A. Levner et al., Radiographics, 2013. Powered by the benchmark values for GBC surgery can serve as key references for quality improvement efforts and for future comparisons between GBC patients, GBC surgical approaches, and centers performing GBC surgery. In particular, the availability of these benchmarks can guide surgical teams to strive for optimal outcomes in GBC surgery benefiting their patients and better contextualizing GBC resection as a complex surgery that requires centers to be better equipped to provide optimal treatment and management for patients with gallbladder cancer. The results of this study support the idea that centralization of care for gallbladder cancer may lead to better outcomes for patients, added Vega. According to the researchers, the benchmark values they found will allow surgeons and institutions to define best possible outcomes for GBC patients and enable comparisons with other GBC patient groups, increasing the quality of research collaboration. 
The use of a benchmark, best candidate for surgery, group of patients is an important factor that can help healthcare providers and patients make more informed decisions about treatment options and potential outcomes, said Vega. These findings appear online in the journal Annals of Surgical Oncology. Source Boston University School of Medicine Journal Reference Vega, E.A., et al., 2023 Benchmarks and Geographic Differences in Gallbladder Cancer Surgery, an International Multicenter Study Annals of Surgical Oncology doi.org slash 10.1245 slash s10434-023-13 5313